So it's time for Teach Your Business to Fish. This is your business guide, Michael Rager. And man, we're ready to go out and just keep rocking this New Year's in. I'm telling you, man, we got a great guest today. You know, I hope I don't mess your name up the first time, Jason, but it's Jason Contomitris. He's with Hydroco. Man, this young man is doing some awesome stuff. I mean, some high tech stuff in the in, in the transportation of hydrogen. Uh, it's going to be amazing to talk about it and you know what he's done to uh, to help this happen. But I want to talk a little bit about those of you guys that are following me on Facebook. Uh, I, I, I hope you all saw the fish we caught this weekend. Uh, I want to give a little shout out to uh, Michael Stoddard and to Stacey Leanne. Man, we went out there and just crushed things this weekend. I mean, it, it was just awesome. The things that we do is, you know, it's having a business is great because you want to make money, but you have a business so you can go have experiences. And the experience we had this week, man, I'm telling you, we got a Mike's, Mike's uh, 60 foot Hatteras, the Stacy Leanne. And uh, when we left the dock Friday evening at about 10 o'clock, there was six to eight foot waves. I'm um, telling everybody's thinking, man, you're, you're nuts going out there. But man, this boat, it rode so smooth. And man, we got out there. By the time we came back Sunday morning, it was flat, calm like glass. But the thing is, is in between it, the reason we went and did this is we're looking forward to this year about we're looking to do six or seven trips this year. And part of them is going to be able to go out and fish tournaments. We want to go fish some Marlin tournaments. But, um, you know, Mike had a brand new captain. Uh, his, his, his son, Owen, was uh, kind of our first mate. Now, Owen's like 13. Uh, something like that. I mean, kids is just an awesome, awesome young man. You know, we had me on there for the first time. Andy Erickson on the first time. Uh, Brent Anderson for the first time. And we're trying to put together a team. And what we were starting to do is pre prepare. And one of the things that Mike talked about, me and Mike talked about, we were sitting up there, you know, having a cocktail on the way out, was the, the, the secret to success. And the secret to success is really, it's, it's preparation plus opportunity. Preparation plus opportunity allows you to be successful. One of the things that I was told, you know, when I was, I was uh, younger and I was, at, I remember at a John Maxwell conference, I think that's exactly where it was. And John said, when opportunity knocks, it's too late to prepare. So you've got to be prepared already for what you want to do and what you're going to be doing in life. You've got to be going out there and doing the right things. You've got to be learning what you're doing and, and, and doing all these things to move forward in the way that you want to do in your business and your life. And, and that's what it was about. And that's what we were doing on this fishing trip, man. It was awesome. You know, we were working with Matt, the captain, and, you know, we were watching him prepare some new rigs. And we, we developed some new teasers out there. And... You kind of wish we had a better cameraman than me because one of the best opportunities, man, we're coming around Boom Bang Rig and we got we got 11 lines out and six of them. Boo, 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 boo. We had a 70 pound tuna come out of the air 10 feet behind the boat and grab this 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 lure. Uh, but I hadn't grabbed the camera yet. And uh, then when I did grab it and things are going on and, you know, all hell's. Oh, heck's breaking loose. I got to watch it because I, I, I got told that, um, yeah, I, I said the S word last week and it was OK that we, we can do this on uh, we can do this on uh, the Internet. But now that we're on live TV, that's a that's a big issue. So I got to watch what I'm saying. But we got to be prepared for everything that we're doing. But I wasn't prepared with the camera, so I missed that shot. And then the best part was is everything's breaking loose and it's going tonight and I'm recording and Mike and I are talking about, yeah, man, look at this, look at this. And I. I forgot to take the lens cap off the video camera so i got we got about three minutes of some serious discussion funny stuff and i'm missing what's going on everything about it so it's, it's learning about preparation and and that's what this first trip about it was the first trip of the year we were ready to go out there ready to have some fun i think jonathan may show up show some photos of our catch and stuff like that but Mike said, hey, you know what? I'm going to do this for, you, for, the, for the boat. We're going to put us in, the, I think it's the Texas offshore, offshore shootout, put us in the tuna category. And when we came home by the end of the day, we were sitting number one, two, and three in the, uh, in, in the tournament. So we've got the three biggest fish right there. And there they are. There's me and Mike Stoddard. And, uh, you know, there, there's these nice, nice tuna fish, man. These things are all 70-plus pounds. And, you know, it's just amazing to go out there. And it's, this is what it's about, meeting good friends that have a similar vision. And the whole time Mike and I were on the boat, all we were talking about was we shared a similar vision of we both want to be on TV doing a fishing show. And, you know, I'm on TV right now. Uh, how are we going to make this happen? I don't know exactly yet, 
But all I know is he and I are going to be talking about this weekly, monthly. Every time that I go on the trip, we're going to talk about it some more, talk about it some more, bring some people in and, and, and move around. We've been talking to some of my friends. You know, Blaine Walker is one of the best videographers I know. You know, he's like, oh, my God, I want to help this happen. You know, all these great things. You know, Cameron, he's sitting out there. We showed him what's going on. Here's my nine-year-old going, Dad, man, I cannot wait to go on this. And that's what it's about, man. It's about living life and you as a business owner being successful so you can have opportunities. You can have opportunities and you can have experiences. And that's what it's about. How many more minutes we got till we go to, to break? Two, two more minutes. So I'm going to share some other stuff. So, you know, what's been going on since, uh, since last week? You know, we've had a lot of good stuff going on. We've been talking to a lot of people. You know, the, the, the year is off to a good start for a lot of people. Man, I'm, I'm talking to a lot of business owners. There's a lot of new things um, that, are, that are really going on. And, and, and this is what we want to see. We want to see the opportunity. Man, look at that picture up there right now. It's just, je it's just flat, calm coming in, you know, those of you that, that will be seeing this, it's just perfect, it's beautiful. I wish it was like that going out, man, when it was, oh, there we are smoking cigars, you know, doing all the fun things that we were doing. But, but, but this is what it's about. We were just preparing, 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 preparing for our opportunity. We prepared for our opportunity, and we got two really good opportunities. We got out to the Nansen rig, first pass, boom. You know, Jenny, um, Mike's wife, caught a 71-pound tuna. We trolled around for a long time, and, and those of you that know about offshore fishing like this, it's hours and hours of boredom broken up by total chaos. And the total chaos came when we got to Boomerang, and we came around the rig on our first pass, and we had five lines go off at the same time. We landed two fish. Two of them crossed and broke, broke themselves off. There's nothing we can really do about that. The other one was a barracuda. It was a pretty big barracuda, but it's not what we were, we were searching for. So this is what we want you guys to be talking about. This is what you want to be listening about. You know, what opportunity are you preparing for? That's what it's about. You've got to figure out what you're preparing for. There's, there's Tina on here. She's always, always on here, man. She's, you know, she's got the opportunity, her and her, her husband with, with Bait Butler. You know, I think Andy Erickson just came on. You know, the opportunity he's preparing for is helping business owners sell their business. You know, Stefan, yeah, you can come out, baby. It just costs you a little bit of money. We love you. But, um, you know, be prepared for the opportunity because if you're not prepared, it's going to pass you by. You're not going to be able to succeed. If we would have came up on those rigs and we didn't have any lures in the water and we didn't have anything there, we would have trolled right over those fish and nothing would have happened. There was no baits. There was nothing out there for them to go out and for us to be successful with. So that's what it's about. This is Michael Rager, your business guide. I think we're going to break right now. We're going to get Jason on here. Or we're going to talk about how he prepared for success and listen to the story of Hydroco. COVID-19 transformed the way we do business. Now more than ever, fast lead generation and customer retention will determine if a business survives or not. The Now Media Video Business Card is designed to be sent using your smartphone. It's the next generation business card that will open the door for you while keeping social distancing. The Now Media Video Business Card is affordable for anyone from startups to multinational companies and is already being used by hundreds of businesses. Stay open, stay in business. Call us today. Hi, I'm Sandra Mendes Hassan, Executive Business Advisor, Key Business Strategist, and Management Specialist with Extraordinary HCBI. I work with business owners and executives to help them achieve their goals, implementing the right strategy and developing leaders that turn their dreams into reality. Do you have a business idea and need to know how to launch it? Based on your vision, do you have the criteria or entrepreneurial mindset to achieve your goals? Do you have what it takes to motivate your team so they can be more proactive and productive? Would you like to learn how to get more clients and close more businesses? At Extraordinary HCBI, we take businesses to the next level by providing them with resources, counseling, and implementing strategies that work because we want your business to thrive. We also assist businesses and aspiring entrepreneurs on the initial steps of their business plan development, creating financial projections and guiding them on how to create a financial package that will work for their business. Because your success is our success, take a decisive step today and call me at 832-660-4291.
and let Extraordinary HCBI turn your dreams into reality. This is Michael Rager, your business guide, and we are back with Teach Your Business to Fish. I'm so excited to uh, to bring this guy on. So, you know, Jonathan, we got we got Jason. I'm going to be able to see him. Sweet. Jason, how you doing, man? Good. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, man. You're all dressed up and looking sharp. It's just a normal Wednesday, to be quite honest. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm looking forward to this. I'm a big fan of your podcast and your uh, program that you guys have put together. It's exciting to see. Um, just the, the culmination of outdoors and in business because there's you a lot of been, you should have been on the boat with us your connections that work well and it, we'd love to have you on the boat with us this past week man it would have been fun so you know I, I met one of your partners laura a few weeks ago uh -huh. we had her on man you guys we were doing some research on your company it's it's pretty interesting how you got things going take us to the beginning and how did you start hydroco and, and what led you to um to, to do what you're doing right now yeah, so essentially in um, about mid-2018, or I'm sorry, 2017, actually, I started doing some research on the hydrogen economy that was emerging because, you know, you don't catch a wave, you ride the wave, and if mm -hmm. you don't hit it right, you just get, you know, ransacked by a wave, essentially. So you have to be prepared for, you know, evolutions before they happen. And starting out in that research early on, I identified that there was a need for massive hydrogen production and transportation because you can create you know vehicles and the th the vehicles of the future exist today just a matter of the infrastructure behind them so we saw that need uh becoming something in the future and started working on solutions to develop those early on um, initially we started out in the forklift industry because we are in mississippi and memphis is you know 45 minutes away from our office um, so that, you know, clearly is our back, back backyard market, as I'd like to say. Um, but as interest grew over the past two and a half years, we've really expanded things into a more national approach. And we're working on developing scalable, repeatable solutions that can be implemented nationally and then eventually globally as things you know, turn up. Well, let me ask you that. I mean, like, how old are you, man? You're young. And you started this when you were in college, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, so I started it in my uh, high, my college apartment um, for about three months there. It was me and a plastic folding table. Um, I'd roll out of bed, go to work at about 8 o'clock, and then I'd go to class at about 10, and then come back and go back to work. Um, and then things just kept going. So now we you know, have our offices set up. It's a 9 to 5 gig pretty much most days, but we like to push it further than that. Um, but yeah, essentially we started out, I'm 22, started the company when I was 19. Um, at first everyone was like, what are you doing, man? This makes no sense. What is hydrogen? But a lot of those people now are saying, yeah, you were right about something. So it feels pretty <laughs> good. I, I tell people, man, I'm right. And I got two bright ideas, one, one bright idea a day. And I hope somebody's around to capture it. Um, so when, when you started, when you started this company, where did you go to for help? I mean, when I went to school, I mean, I loved my, my, my instructors and I loved everything, but they weren't pitching me as a, as a 20 year old like you to start a new company. Where did you go to for help? Yeah. So it's interesting. Um, so Mississippi's entrepreneurial uh, ecosystem, as I like to call it, it's um, not energy focused whatsoever. So that was one of the challenges we faced early on was finding uh, good mentors and help with that. And one, uh, God, his name is escaping my head right now. I'll think of it in about five minutes and bring it up. But um, Owens Alexander at the Ole Miss CIE, we met with him early on and he got it completely. He understood it. His background was in uh, telecommunications. So they built the smallest handset phone. This was like 2009. So it was a big deal. And essentially, he got it and he said, look, guys, you all have the next FedEx or Walmart. Y'all are going to be the biggest company that's ever come out of the school before. 
And he just told us, go with it, do what you need to do, meet who you need to meet, because I know nothing about energy, I know nothing about hydrogen, but I can help you guys with the basics of starting, you know, a business and getting comfortable. So he was really helpful. Um, then we did a lot of work with just the local chambers of commerce out here. They're big supporters of industrial development just because of the economic benefits. And pretty much from there, we've just been rolling along. I mean, honestly, the best example I could give you is, just, you know, in the cartoons, when you push a snowball down a hill and it just gets bigger and bigger, that's pretty much what happened with this. Well, how big are you guys today? So, you know, you started in the, the, the college dorm. How, how many employees you got today and where, where are you looking to go? Yeah, so right now we're at about, I would say about 10, including our salespeople and our ICs. Um, overall, I mean, my goal is to turn this company into an eight to 900 person company within the six, next six years. Um, I think it's attainable and I think we'll be there quite honestly. I mean, the demand for hydrogen is there. And one of, our, one of our big premises is whenever we come up with a new idea is that we like to use the term real solutions to real problems. So if it doesn't exist today or it doesn't exist in the next six months and it's a solution to something, we really don't put that much weight into it. So we're really about, you know, hammering nails and not talking about how to hammer a nail. No, that's, that's really interesting. So with, with Hydroco and, and, and hydrogen, I, I was looking at, I was looking you up yesterday and looking at some, some things and Nancy um, sent over some stuff and we're looking, you know, some, there's some really cool, hydrogen vehicles out there right now. I mean, really high performance stuff. Tell me about that. Yeah. So, I mean, it start most uh, fuel cell vehicles today are actually forklifts, if you can believe that. Um, and they're, I mean, they're workhorses. Um, when we started out, I like to go meet with the people that actually sell the product on the ground. So we went and met with all these regional forklift reps. And I said, well, what do you guys think about fuel cells? You want to hurt my feelings, be honest. And they said, man, these things are like diesel engines. They like to get run hard, except for there's no maintenance. There's no downtime. So that was pretty much the example set forward for fuel cells. Um, it's been a lot of movement recently in vehicles and transportation. So um, everyone in the energy sector, pretty much anyone who owns a stock is familiar with Nicola. Um, me and my business partner, Luke, we were at the Cola World when it first launched. That was very exciting to see the three different trucks that are launching. Oh, that's and awesome. That's awesome. So it's also movement with companies like Kaizen um, and then the new Toyota Mirais and all those sedans coming out are very exciting movements. So how do you see hydrogen in the green movement? I mean, you know, here in, here in Houston, you know, where I'm at, and I, I think you're, you, you know, you've got family back here, you told me. How do you see hydrogen entering into in, entering into the green movement and, you know, let's say for vehicles and the, the, the vehicles that you see riding behind me every day? How do you see that changing things? Yeah, so, I mean, it's hydrogen, it's interesting. It can be used as a pure energy source. So, I mean, you can go buy a fuel cell car if you want to. But green hydrogen, which is kind of the uh, white whale, the industry today, is a pathway forward. So if you can integrate green hydrogen to things like oil refining and chemical production, those are emission reducing themselves. You don't actually have to have a hydrogen car. So today, most hydrogen's made at oil refineries for hydro treating of gasoline and diesel to reduce the sulfur emissions of those fuel products. So if you can integrate green hydrogen and the new energy strategies that are being utilized in existing energy uh, during the transition, it's going to be beneficial. I mean, overall, you know, it's not going to be one day we turn a switch and everyone goes and buys a fuel cell car. It's going to be a slow transition, just like anything else. And it's about, you know, energy efficiency, quite honestly. Um, a fuel cell is 50% efficient at, you know, taking energy out of a fuel source and your average car is about 25%. So it's really optimizing your transportation methods over time. No, no, that's pretty awesome. It's, it's, it's looking at it that way and not really understanding how the, the, a lot of us don't understand exactly how hydrogen is brought into, uh, you know, the, 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 the processing of the, the fuels and stuff like that and, and where the actual energy reduction is going to be. And, and, and that's really interesting because everybody thinks 
you know, that, that we're going to all of a sudden, like you said, flip on, there's this new green deal and everything's going to be electric, solar, wind, hydrogen, and the need for fossil fuels will be gone. And that's not really true. It's, it's going to be a slow movement, but everything needs to work together. Is that how you're seeing it and seeing how your company is going to help? Exactly. So that's one of the things we've identified. Um, I mean, just to, for example, there's um, in the semi truck market, there's a product called a glider truck. And essentially what that is, is you buy, it's a chassis without an engine. So everything's built, but it just doesn't have an engine. So there's opportunities even with diesel trucks to go in and replace it with an electric motor. And that would, you can program anything to do whatever you want. Um, so you can match what a diesel engine would output and it would pretty much be the same driving capabilities for us our goal is to reduce the cost of delivering hydrogen itself because today it's just too high when you look at california and their economy they've set up with hydrogen the average price of hydrogen is about 10 to 15 dollars a kilogram it's all trucked using diesel trucks today and it's mainly liquid so one of the things about liquid hydrogen is that it's more difficult to get permitted just because there's inherent safety risk. Um, and we're really about reducing safety risk at any way possible. And then our other thing is, is efficient transportation. There's a lot of projects that are coming out with, you know, hydrogen cost at a dollar, dollar fifty a kilogram at the gate, and that's great. But if you have to drive a hundred miles to deliver it to a station, you know, you might be selling hydrogen for the equivalent of gasoline was three to four dollars a gallon so it's all about driving efficiency in price by driving efficiency in terms of how are we using our carbon emissions to work for us instead of against us so when you with your company and this is something we're going to go to break in about three minutes and then come back and do another segment um with your company who is your client actually who, who are you selling your products and services to yeah, so it's it's really interesting. So hydrogen, you know, of course, it's the lightest element out there today. Or, you know, they might come up with a new element. No one knows. But it's the lightest one today. So what we did was we looked at that market and hydrogen that's emerging. And we said, well, if we have a good transportation method for hydrogen, that means we have a good transportation method for helium, natural gas, argon, neon, biogas, RNG, the whole nine yards. So most of our business today and most of our clients today are people in the compressed gas spaces. Um, for example, one of our biggest industries we serve is the helium industry. And we've you know, brought them solutions and we've reduced fleet sizes by about two and a half times, uh, depending on the customer and the demand. But all those things really work to provide a more stable environment um, for the you know, gas industry today. So cool. I, I want to get into that a little bit. What are we, it's about ready to go to break Jonathan here. So we got one minute. I'm going to wrap some things up here. Then I want to get back and I want to talk to you about, you know, how are you finding new clients? How do you do some things? Cause this is when we're talking yeah. to business owners and we're, we're going through the teacher business to fish model. We want to understand what the end product is. And, and this is, this is something that most business owners don't think about. They're thinking about real tangible products. How do I move a pen? How do I sell a pizza? Man, you, you got something that's here that's really conceptual and it's, it's really taking the, you know, you know, understanding the business. So this is Michael Rage, your business guide. We're going to, we're going to go out right now and we're going to be right back with uh, Jason in a minute. COVID-19 transformed the way we do business. Now more than ever, fast lead generation and customer retention will determine if a business survives or not. The Now Media Video Business Card is designed to be sent using your smartphone. It's the next generation business card that will open the door for you while keeping social distancing. The Now Media Video Business Card is affordable for anyone from startups to multinational companies and is already being used by hundreds of businesses. Stay open, stay in business. Call us today. Hi, I'm Sandra Mendes Hassan, Executive Business Advisor, Key Business Strategist, and Management Specialist with Extraordinary HCBI. I work with business owners and executives to help them achieve their goals, implementing the right strategy and developing leaders that turn their dreams into reality. 
We have a business idea and need to know how to launch it. Based on your vision, do you have the criteria or entrepreneurial mindset to achieve your goals? Do you have what it takes to motivate your team so they can be more proactive and productive? Would you like to learn how to get more clients and close more businesses? At Extraordinary HCBI, we take businesses to the next level by providing them with resources, counseling, and implementing strategies that work because we want your business to thrive. We also assist businesses and aspiring entrepreneurs on the initial steps of their business plan development, creating financial projections and guiding them on how to create a financial package that will work for their business. Because your success is our success, take a decisive step today and call me at 832-660-4291 and let Extraordinary HCBI turn your dreams into reality. to experience the ease and convenience of the latest and most advanced home security system? Are you going away on vacation and want to have peace of mind while you're not at your home or at your office? According to the FBI, a robbery occurs every 13 seconds and homes and businesses without a security system are 300% more likely to be burglarized. Hawk Security provides security solutions to residential and small businesses in the state of Texas and from California to Georgia, building a custom tailored security setup that matches your needs. Whether it is home security, fire and carbon monoxide detection, flood detection, connected senior care, managed video surveillance solutions, alarm monitoring and life safety. In addition to fire and carbon monoxide detection, Hawk Security has a smart home business integration, expanding security services to a lifestyle solution, keeping customers connected to their home and businesses from anywhere in the world, from their tablet or mobile device. So you can have peace of mind even if you're not at home or in your office. Reduce your energy cost, scheduling automatic changes in thermostats or lighting. And because we rely on our heroes every single day, Hawk Security offers security services discounts to military personnel, veterans, first responders, educators, and hospital personnel. Our mission is to keep our clients safe, treat them like family, and provide them with a user-friendly security system with personalized customer service 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. For integrity, honesty, passion, and excellent customer service, Take a strong step today toward getting protected and call Rosanna Torres at 832-863-8574 because every home and business is unique and every security system should be unique too. Hey, this is your business guide, Michael Rager, and I'm back with Jason Contomitris of Hydroco. Man, Jason, God, I wish you were here in studio. It'd be, it'd be so awesome because I'm getting some stuff, some feedback on, uh, we got you live on Facebook too, and people are uh, asking questions and stuff like this. But I wanna, I'm gonna go a little bit deeper. Um, so starting the company right now, and I think I gotta turn the volume down here because I'm hearing myself in it. Um, starting the company, have you guys gone out for funding yet? Have, have you and your partners, have you funded everything? How are you, how are you paying for, how did you pay for startup of this company? Yeah. So, I mean, we started out just going with funding. Um, of course, when we started the company, things were tighter than anyone would like, but as we're evolving, I mean, we've been really good at, you know, creating value and then also raising funds, how we set our mind to quite honestly. What about uh, the vision of the company? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I saw you thinking there. I thought you were you were done with that that question. You want to finish? What's what's, um, the, what's, what's, what's what's the end goal of the company? I mean, are you looking to build this thing to sell it? Are you looking to build this thing to be your legacy, or where, where are you looking at this right now? I mean, as a as a young person, um, you know, I have 40 years working ahead of me, so. 
if we're there for the next 40 years working and we're going to be, you know, the next Exxon or Shell, um, there for the ride, it's just like catching a fish. Um, I always look back to the old man in the sea. The Marlin's either going to push the boat or you're going to let go one day and the Marlin's going to swim off. So quite honestly, um, you know, maybe we'll sell it one day, maybe not, but it's really about just creating sustainable value for the communities we serve and the people we serve because, you know, hydrogen's coming. It's important on a global scale. And really our goal is to be an innovator and, you know, create value for the communities we serve at the end of the day. So if we're able to do that long-term, then we're going to keep on going. And, you know, if we find the right partner that wants to buy our business out, potentially that's something we're also open to. Well, that, that, that's really interesting because as you look at it, is I'm always, I always teach my customers, my clients to build a business to sell it because it's always, in the, it's, it's always running efficiently then. And, you know, we want to be able, if, if we're going to do it, we're, we're building a business to become an asset. That's, that's what it's about. We want, we want it to be an asset. Are you guys looking to stay private? Are you looking to go public? Have you, have you started looking at those things yet? I mean, I, I've looked at uh, public companies and the whole structure of them pretty deeply and in depth. And I mean, I don't want to be the CEO of a public company. It's just a lot of scrutiny there. And I like keeping things privately. I mean, we have a great team today. Our board's great. And it keeps us lean and it keeps us efficient. So if there, become, if there comes an opportunity where, you know, there's value creation for us, um, it's maybe something we'll explore one day, but you know, right now we're comfortable being privately held company. Cool. Now, are you guys looking to stay in? in is is there is there benefits for you being in Mississippi or looking at the company long term? Is is because it's an energy energy source? Is it going to be, you know, potentially better for you to be in Texas or in Louisiana to 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 be closer to more of your 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 clients? Yeah. So I'm of the belief that you're either a disruptor or you're being disrupted. Um, hydrogen production until recently was controlled by about five different companies in the U.S. And they maintain about a 98% uh, market share over you know, hydrogen production at scale. So we started out in Mississippi because there's no other energy here. So we didn't really want people to look over the fence or look out of their backyard and see, oh, what's this company doing? How can we learn from them? Um, so it really allowed us to kind of tailor our product offerings in an incubator in a sense. Um, and eventually, I mean, we're planning on moving to Houston, setting up shop there just because I don't want to have to travel, you know, 150 days out of the year. I don't think anyone else on my team does either. And we want to be able to forge those strong uh, personal connections with our clients and really deliver value in a way that is sustainable because I'm a boots on the ground guy. So if I can't see it, it doesn't, doesn't benefit me and my thought process and my decision making. So anything I can do to put myself in, you know, in the scenarios and the markets we're serving is something we're going to do. So I want to start talking. I, I I talk a lot about profits, and I, I really push profits in the business. Now, is when will Hydroco be? When do you see it being a profitable company? I, I I take it you guys are still in that 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 startup phase, and you're still you know doing a lot of stuff to move what you need to do, and you you've got some funding coming. When do you see the the company starting to turn you know nice profits? So it's the it's the twentieth today, right? Yeah. So we're looking at being cash flow positive and profitable within the next month. Nice. Nice. Yeah. What, what makes that Very happen? Exciting. And I mean, it's, you know, a lot of fuel cell businesses haven't turned a profit yet. And, you know, we exist in a capitalist society. So there's always an emphasis on profits. And that's something that we always have an emphasis on because, you know, it's about mutual value creation for our customers and ourselves. So as you look to expand, how do you, how, how do you start diversifying? Cause I know when Laura was in here, we started talking about, and one of the things you mentioned was moving product. And when I first met Laura, we, you know, we talked about, um, you know, looking at re, reusing pipe existing pipelines to move hydrogen instead of other fuels 
where do you see is your biggest profits going to be coming from or your biggest revenue is going to come from? Is it going to be something like that? Or is it going to be more, more technology driven and, and helping develop, help, helping yeah. companies develop products? So, I mean, if I, if I have it my way, which I hope I do, um, we're going to do a lot in the composite space. So that means pressure vessels and storage, storage mediums. So I really want to build a diverse uh, business within our company to do things like uh, the fuel tanks for ships, fuel tanks for these hydrogen aircraft they're talking about, um, and then just weight reduction using composites. So just for example, a lot of the uh, systems used on uh, military vehicles today, they use steel tanks and they're 50% heavier than our product is. So if we can go in and, you know, serve those markets and provide value for them, that's something we're going to do. Um, our long-term strategy in terms of our service sector is something called mobile pipeline. So, you know, the pipeline and the blinds and all those things, they're great. They're going to be a strong, strong market force in the future. But today, the pipe and the engineering and the research that's needed to do that safely is going to take some time. It also takes buy-in. Um, so for us, we're looking at developing a mobile pipeline platform for pretty much most commodity compressed gases. So the helium, argon, neon, nitrogen, methane, all of those things, because one of the patterns that we've noticed is that there's all these production sites and only a select few of them have access to a pipeline. So if we can do things to increase efficiency over the road, uh, compared to technology that's out there today, we see that being a very strong market mover. And if we're in all these different compressed gases, um, upturns and downturns in different pricing and different markets won't be as much of an issue because we can just move our fleet around. No, that's interesting. I, I, I like a lot of people don't under, realize my background. I, I actually come from the pipeline industry. I was uh, in midstream for 24 years. I was an environmental consultant and I worked on some of the largest pipelines in the United States from the late eighties to the two thousands. So, you know, what, what kind of regulatory hurdles do you see, you know, that, that could slow you down and how, how can you as a hopefully industry leader help move these things in the right way to make things easy? Yeah. So with, with our mobile pipeline platform, you know, that's all road based and highway based. So, Today, our products, they're DOT approved and we have a pending approval from, or we're working on approval with Canada. Um, once we get that solidified with the Canadian market, we pretty much can run uh, anywhere that has a road without much concern. Uh, where you get into a regulatory environment is when you park the trailer or you have something installed permanently, then it involves input from you know, zoning, commissions, fire marshals, and the whole nine yards. So with mobile pipeline, there's not that much red tape to cut through. Um, but it really comes down to FIMSA at the end of the day. And, and FIMSA is the body that oversees hazardous materials transportation. I know you're aware of them, Michael, but mm -hmm. viewers might not be. Um, and essentially, it comes down to what they want us to do. But, you know, we've set a standard and our partners have set a standard of exceeding those standards at all times. So we're not too concerned about what the future can bring. Now with the pipeline, um, it's pretty complex retrofitting a pipeline to run hydrogen because there's an embrittling issue. Um, so you have to look into things like material selection, the valves, the seals used, what the maintenance looks like. And then it really matters with the end user. Um, if it's just a simple pipeline running from point A to point B, and you have a large industrial user, it's much easier. But when you start getting things in there like city grids and you know diverse smaller users, you have to look at changing stoves, changing the gas meter itself, and changing the pipes at residential places. And all those factors really add up quickly. So there's a lot of red tape when you look at putting in hydrogen into the gas grid, but hopefully we'll see legislation and um, you know, some hands reaching out from the government to assist the industry in making those things possible. Well, that's where people don't understand, but we want to change you know, technologies and how we run energy. You, you, you do need some assistance because we're not, 
we have to retrofit and change the way we, are, we do life. You know, a um, sister-in-law of mine, she, was, uh, she did a lot with economic, uh, economic impact in the Bahamas, and we went to visit her in Barbados, and she talked us through how the country of Barbados, which is, you know, what, Barbados is, what, seven miles long by two miles wide, that they helped fund every structure had a solar panel on it be to to reduce the amount that the uh, the island had to had to depend on heating oil so this is these are some big costs that 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 you know us as the everyday consumer we can't afford but we need to change this and we need to look at it so how how long do you see you know are, are you looking at 3030 3035 when do you see hydrogen or you know the, the a lot more of these green fields becoming more commonplace in the everyday home so the uh, you know the people setting policy have set a goal of a 50 percent emission reduction by 2030 so that's very promising for us in our industry um the goal is by 2050 to be completely carbon negative or mm -hmm. net carbon output as a country so Honestly, I think in 2025, we're going to see a lot of really, really cool developments coming out here. Um, they might not be, you know, passenger cars. They might not be sedans, but we're going to see things like hydrogen trains come around. We're going to see hydrogen 18 wheelers become a reality. Um, maybe we're going to see alternative fuel shipping become a reality. And things like that are really the largest fuel consumers out there today. So if we can just have tiny changes to how products are moved across the country, we'll really be able to make a big impact in our emissions reduction. And then of course that's helpful for us as the hydrogen industry is going to be a vital part of that. Because batteries just will not be able to keep up. No, that's pretty, that's pretty interesting. I, I love that because a lot of some of the other stuff we do in one of our other companies, um, we're, we, we just formed a new company called the ESG Leaders Alliance, where we, we want to connect leaders like you that are using new technology and new things to leaders in bigger industry, you know, that, that hey, I've got to be transparent on what I'm doing. And, and they don't know how to connect. So how you right now are you connecting with these, these, these people that here's a 22 year old guy that's got this new badass technology. How are you getting in the door? Yeah. So one of our things, our sales team is uh, very experienced. So I'll give you an example. Uh, one of our guys, he's been in the industry for about 30 to 35 years at this point. So if we have buy-in from experienced professionals, it makes the, uh, the 22 year old at the table a lot more credible, but, um, Essentially for us, I mean, it's about carbon emissions. And fortunately, there's this great tool called the flight by the EPA. Um, you can type in any company you want and get a full report on what their emissions are, what's producing emissions. And we have strategies to mitigate those. Uh, one example would be there's a few groups that do something called Calin processing to make fertilizers. And today they use methane combustion, so natural gas combustion to make their Callan product and they emit a lot of emissions. There you go, you got it up there. Um, and essentially it's not that hard to change, you know, a furnace over to hydrogen. It's more difficult when you're not, when you're changing a thousand furnaces to hydrogen, but if you're doing it on a facility by facility basis, it makes things much easier. So, Part of our strategy is just going in there, providing them with financials, because I'm a big believer in ROI and creating value. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, our products, they're an investment in the future, but with any investment, you want to see a return. So we really do some, we call it white glove service to deliver financial spreadsheets, financial analysis, uh, kind of like you would with an investment product to give customers insight into the benefits long term. Oh, that's pretty that's pretty amazing you know i'm glad jonathan you're able to find that and bring that stuff up but you know it, it, it's a lot of things that, that 
every day citizens aren't thinking about and it's it's i'm glad that that, that that there's guys out you that are looking at this because there's so many things in the background that, that really is going on that, that most people don't understand so we're gonna go we're gonna go to break here in just a minute we're gonna come back uh, i think we got our last segment is what five minutes five six minutes it's 15. Okay. So we're going to come back. We're going to talk about another 10, 15 minutes, uh, Jason. But I, w I want to get off business a little bit on the last segment. I want to come start to, talking about the fun and the reason why we own businesses. And I want to understand why you as you know, a 22-year-old said, I'm going to go this route. And, and what do you really want to see? All right. So this is Mike Rager, your business guide. We'll be back in just a minute. I hope you guys are enjoying this because it's really interesting. Hi. This is Alberto Tudela. The Houston metro area has experienced a substantial increase of wind and hail damage, flooding, and other perils in the last five years. Now more than ever, it is critical and essential to ensure your company, your property, as well as your family have the right insurance coverage. Tudela Insurance Solutions offers a wide variety of insurance for home, auto, property, as well as life insurance. My goal is to find a tailored option that guarantees the right coverage at the right price. Specific to your needs, present and future, so you protect what matters the most. Call me today at 713-714-4475 and allow our team at Tudela Insurance Solutions to make sure you're protected. Accidents never happen when we expect them. Now is the time to ensure you have peace of mind. transformed the way we do business. Now more than ever, fast lead generation and customer retention will determine if a business survives or not. The Now Media Video Business Card is designed to be sent using your smartphone. It's the next generation business card that will open the door for you while keeping social distancing. The Now Media Video Business Card is affordable for anyone from startups to multinational companies and is already being used by hundreds of businesses. Stay open, stay in business. Call us today. Hey, it's your business guide, Michael Rager, and we're back with Teach Your Business to Fish, and we are with Jason Contumitris. All right, Jason, let's talk about this. You're 22. You got a really cool company. What do you do for fun, man? Honestly, recently, not a lot. Um, it's a lot of work. But, I mean, I'm in a great part of the country to be around nature. So, you know, me and my uh, girlfriend, we go on hikes. We do a lot of things like that. We have a dog. Um, honestly, you're going to laugh about this. Is I've gotten really into smoking meats and making barbecue recently. So that's really been my fun during the COVID. Um, but outside of that, I mean, hunting, fishing are all big parts of the things I like to do. Um, I'm a bigger duck hunter than anything else. Also like, you know, hog hunting. That's one of my favorite things. Um, unfortunately deer hunting kind of got ruined for me, but you know, it's really just being in the outdoors, being with nature are some of my favorite things. Just hearing the sounds, honestly, the wind's a beautiful thing. Now that's cool. Now what part of Mississippi are you in? So I'm in North Mississippi. It's Oxford. Um, yeah. so we're about 40 minutes from the largest lake in the state. So, I mean, beautiful, beautiful nature around us. Um, oh, I forgot to add in, I play quite, I play some golf with my business partner. He's a lot better than I am. So it's a little embarrassing to go play golf against him because, you know, he'll make it there in three, I'll make it there in nine. Um, so, you, you know, there's not really a competition there. <laughs> we just say you get your money's worth. Exactly. I mean, I go through a pack of balls a day, quite honestly. <laughs> exactly, exactly. We got to get you out in the boat with us, man. We get you out there to pull on some tuna and some marlin with us. I think that'll be a that'll be a great. A, oh, yeah. a, a, a no, great let thing. me know. I mean, I have all my saltwater rigs and all my reels and everything. They're down in Houston. Um, I'm a diver. Forgot to mention that. Um, and then a little bit of a mountaineer early on. Maybe I'll get back into it, but I really have no desire to be cold for a week straight. So. We'll see what happens. See, you don't even need to bring gear, man. You just come on the boat. All you need are all you need is your, your booze for the weekend, and um, you yeah. know whatever you. Get. <laughs> that's our that's our fun. That's the great thing about the boats we go on. You know, we're gonna be doing some stuff over in Venice, Louisiana, going to catch some big tuna fish here. We're gonna get that going on. We're gonna be going out with. Um, I don't know. If, 
we got to connect on Facebook. I know we're not right now, and I haven't posted any of the stuff on LinkedIn. But we just got back on a, a, a trip where we caught some really nice tuna fish on my friend Mike Stoddard's 40-foot hat or 40-foot, 60-foot hatteras. So, you know, it's going oh, on. It's like going out on a yacht having some fun. So why why did you decide to go into business? I mean, you, you're in college. Why, why did you say, screw this, I'm going to start a company? It was a matter of um... – I mean, I always go back. It's, it's a weird analogy, but it's surfing. So if you don't catch the wave at the right time, it's just going to throw you and you're going to end up under the water wondering where the surface is. Um, and I knew I wanted to go into hydrogen and knew I wanted to go in the energy space and make a big impact and kind of saw this wave start to form and figured, hey, we'll jump in there. Uh, one of my dad's quotes was jump in and figure it out when you get there. It uh, doesn't go very far with the whole preparedness mentality that I have, but his other quote was proper preparedness prevents poor performance. So, you know, they kind of contradict each other, but, you know, we just got in the space, wanted to ride the wave and see where it took us quite honestly. Um, and it's been good so far. So we're yeah, happy. Two... We're doing something we're passionate about and there's not much more you can ask for in a business. Well, two of the quotes that I, I did on the, the intro before I had you on here, we were talking about opportunity and success is opportunity equals preparedness is, you know, when opportunity knocks, you don't have time to prepare. And one of my friends, Les Brown, uh, he used to say, you know, jump off the cliff and build your wings on the way down. And again, you, there, it's, 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 they're pretty opposite each other, but you got to be prepared to build your wings. So what prepared you? I mean, what were you what were you studying in school where were you going and what prepared you to see this opportunity yeah so initially uh when i got into school i wanted to be a lawyer um and you know we're, we're seeing how that went um but you know my first job out of high school was i was doing analytics for a company called westfield and it was before they had uh, social media hubs to really look at facebook and instagram and all these things in one platform so what I did was I went in there and manually put together the data uh, to analyze performance. And that was really our first, that was my first experience ever in business, you know, actually analyzing business from a data standpoint. And I went and did that with the hydrogen industry in 2018 and found all these market holes and sectors that were being underemphasized or there wasn't a lot of interest in and we you know decided to go and exploit those holes that we found in the market so sure. that was really it quite honestly and i mean i've been an entrepreneur uh gosh, since i was like 15 um so you know it's a culmination of factors but at some point you have to jump in and figure it out no, I love it. I love it. So, you know, we're going to wrap up here in a couple minutes. If you, if, if, if anybody came to you and said, Hey, Jason, I need, I need some piece of advice on, I, I'm thinking about something. What are you going to tell them? I mean, you have to maintain, I go back to Vince Lombardi. You have to maintain a habit of winning at all things. Um, you know, winning's a habit, but so is, a lo is losing. And if you practice properly, meaning you do your steps right, you know what you have to do and you have a game plan and you can execute successfully with your skill set, there's nothing that's going to stop you as long as you're willing to put the work in and you're just a nice person. Um, being mean or tough to deal with has never gotten anyone anywhere. So it's about being adaptable and being able to adjust with changes and adversity. I mean, for example, COVID-19, um, it hit everyone hard in the energy space and it's about adapting. Uh, we went and started doing leasing and financing in house when COVID hit because we realized our customers didn't have cash on hand. So, you know, it's about adapting and delivering good solutions. So at the end of the day, if you can provide value to people and you're able to win at providing value, then you're doing something right. Man, that's awesome. That's awesome, man. We're getting ready to wrap up here. I thank you so much. You know, I know it, it, it took us a couple of weeks to get this set up, to get you on here. Hopefully, we're going to be able to follow the things that you and the company's doing. I'm really excited to see it. I, you know, I know I talk to Laura about every six, eight weeks and find out what's going on. And, uh, you know, I, thanks for coming, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah. It's been great. I appreciate it. And you, I'll let you know or you let me know next time y'all are going out on that Hatteras. I uh, love to go fishing with y'all someday. Sounds fun. Oh, man. Are you a we'll diver keep... by chance? 
Oh, yeah. I used to be a dive master. We used to go uh, shoot snapper on the rigs out here. Okay, yeah. I've always, I haven't made it out to the rigs in the Gulf, but I've always wanted to do, so maybe we'll have to make that happen sometime. We may have to. It's scary when you're diving in 350 feet of water and a bull shark swims by. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan's looking at me going, no way, no way. Well, man, everybody, thank you so much, Jason. I appreciate you coming out here. This is Michael Rager. Hey, just want to let you know. Remember, we're we're now on uh, channel twenty one on Now Media. You know, go find us if you you know get that old way, get that uh, get that antenna out, go tweak it around, and go find us. You know, look for us on NowMediaTV.com. You're gonna see us. I think we're on three o'clock live every day, or you know, rebroadcast. You're gonna see one of our shows every day. So you know, check us out if you want to be a guest on here. You want to come talk about your company. You want to share your passion for your business, share your passion for the outdoors. Reach out to me. Find me on Facebook at Michael Rager. Go into the Teacher Business to Fish page. You know, go out there. And those of you that are business owners, man, we got this great new uh, Facebook group called uh, Business Owners and Executives Who Love to Fish and Hunt. You should join it. We got some great things that are happening. There's going to be some new stuff. We're going to be going on a whole bunch of those fishing trips. So if you want to go, let us know about that. So this is Michael Rager, your business guide. We're out today. You want you to go out there and become a real success. Remember, that's about building relationships, equipping your team for success, being ethical, and building leaders. Go out there and make it a great day. Thank you so much. Sí, las palabras de, de don Javier Camarena, ya lo dijo todo. ¿Qué opinas de estas palabras? Pues la verdad es que ah, me emociono mucho este, siempre que habla de, de, <ríe> del proyecto. La verdad es que fue un proyecto muy padre y le agradezco infinitamente que haya sido parte de este proyecto y que haya aceptado más que nada. O sea, creo que eso es lo, lo principal que le agradezco siempre. Y además es, o sea, fue un honor haber trabajado con Javier. La verdad es que fue un proceso muy padre, lo disfruté muchísimo. Eh, aprendí mucho como de cómo él trabaja y cómo es él como artista, ¿no? Entonces, por esa parte fue muy emocionante eh, también escucharlo en algo diferente que no es la ópera. O sea... Fue algo muy, muy interesante todo este proceso. Sí, ya escuché yo el sencillo y la verdad es que cantando, pues sí, un poco de pop, pues te queda muy bien Javier Camarena. ¿Piensan hacer alguna gira juntos? A lo mejor llevar a Lore a Austria o por allá donde siempre andas, este, eh, no sé, en algún escenario operístico. ¿Te gustaría, Lore? Ay, oh, yo sería fan. Si en algún momento Javier me deja, <risa> yo... Mira, en, en cuanto haya la posibilidad que la, que la, que la pandemia ya nos lo permita eh, que encontremos un, un proyecto bonito con muchísimo gusto, a mí me daría una, una gran alegría invitar a Lore y además ya le dije que a su primer auditorio nacional me tiene que invitar Yo ahí eso, no, pues ya Lore ya Lore, entonces nada más un este de, ya, ya está en plataformas, ¿verdad Lore? ¿dónde lo podemos encontrar? Así es, están en todas las plataformas digitales esta, esta canción, Nadie como tú, con Javier Camarena de Francisco Céspedes. Y este y pues espero que les guste. Está en Spotify, iTunes, en todas, 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 como que lo pueden encontrar como Lore Bati o buscando también a Javier. Pues mucho sí, éxito a ambos. Estrenaremos, ya, estrenaremos el video ya dentro de poquito. Creo que este, mañana, de hecho. Mañana. Estamos dando así como que la estamos dando la primicia. Eso. Mañana estrenamos el bueno, video, entonces. Perfecto, que lo, lo filmaron en plena pandemia, ¿verdad? Pero bueno, mire, no se vayan de su sí, televisor. Los invito a que a las 5.30 de la tarde sigan aquí en, el, en Heraldo Televisión. ¿Por qué nos vamos a acompañar a Fernanda Tapia en puro barrio? ¿Quieren verlo? Sí. Amigos, amigas de puro barrio, hemos estado haciendo pues la cobertura. No carnavalera de este año. Bueno, pero para que la gente conozca que aquí hay costumbres y que la gente con mucha felicidad nos muestra sus vestuarios y todo, aunque no se vaya a poder hacer la super concentración. Hola, hola. Ay, ahí están, mira. Uh, vengan. Eso. Gracias por habernos
nos ha acompañado a las tres Marías y el señor Jorge, ¿no? ¿Cómo tres, están? están con ya nada me falta el bigote, nada más. Oiga, no se el... pierda cuatro y media la segunda parte de A la Media con mi querida Leslie Gajano, que va a estar aquí de invitada. Corra la voz, corre la voz, cuatro y media, solo vamos a comer y regresamos. Ya está listo, mi querido Jesús Martín Mendoza, ¿cómo estás? Muy buenas tardes.